सूत्र टेन अनन्याश्रयाणाम त्यागो नन्यता Discarding everything except the Lord is one pointedness in devotion. In the Bhagavad Gita 8.14, Lord Krishna advises Arjun, He who remembers me constantly and single-mindedly attains me easily. The Lord is not impossible to attain, and He is there for all those who are lovingly devoted to Him. Furthermore, He himself is unable to bear any separation from his devotees for any length of time. Lord Krishna's divine nature is such that he can be accessed only by devotion and by no other method. Various scriptures confirm that the Lord can be revealed only through loving devotion. The Katha Upanishad 1.2.7 states, The Lord even when heard about, cannot be understood without loving devotion. And also, from the Katha Upanishad 1.2.23, the Lord is not attainable by instruction or by intellect. Thus, it is absolute. Only devotion can attract Him and only devotion can reveal Him. This aphorism guides one to the path of devotion which is the assured way to attain the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita 9.30, Lord Krishna says, Apichet sudurachāro bhajate mām ananya bhāk sadhu revas samantavyaha samyag vyavasito hi saha If someone worships me single-mindedly, even if he commits sin, he should be considered a divine person for the sake of that sacred commitment. In his commentary on this verse, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur explains, Krishna speaks this verse to reveal his natural and spontaneous affection for his devotees and to illustrate that he does not abandon them even if they do something very wrong. Instead of abandoning his devotees when they make mistakes, he brings them away from those sins and uplifts them. If one should ask what kinds of devotees are worthy of such treatment, the Lord says, One who worships me with undivided commitment. This means they do not worship any other gods or take shelter of the paths of action, knowledge and disciplined contemplation, nor do they desire anything other than Lord Krishna. It is important to note that this Bhagavad Gita verse does not excuse sinful acts in any way. Instead, it praises exclusive devotion. It is generally impossible for evil desires to exist within the heart of an exclusive devotee. The Sanskrit version of this Bhagavad Gita verse gives the depth and real meaning of a devotee who commits sinful acts. The word api has been used at the beginning of this verse to underline the very uncharacteristic or unintentional nature of such sinful action on the part of a devotee. In other words, those sins which have been committed unintentionally, such misadventures may come as the result of the conditioning from a previous life or from bad association. But sinful tendencies cannot last long due to Bhakti Devi's blessings. The very presence of devotion burns a devotee's heart in the fire of repentance and very quickly purifies it. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita 9.31, the Lord proclaims, That devotee soon becomes sinless and attains eternal peace. Know without a doubt that one who loves me is never destroyed. In conclusion, those who commit offences without repentance are not the devotees Lord Krishna speaks of in these two verses, but rather he speaks of those devotees who unintentionally offend. One should not misunderstand the essence of the Bhagavad Gita verses 9.30 and 9.31. 
despite being afflicted by lust and other material cravings, which are considered weaknesses on this path of devotion, one can still enter the devotional path. The Srimad Bhagavatam 10.33.40 mentions, Whoever tells or listens to the story of Lord Krishna's loving play with the cowherd women again and again attains the highest devotion for his lotus feet. They are quickly and eternally cured of the heart's disease, which is desire. People usually believe that one's heart should be first cleansed of its impurities before one is able to attain the highest form of devotion. But this quote reveals that hearing or describing the pastimes of Lord Krishna with the women of Raj is a supremely powerful spiritual activity and cleansing in itself. Raj was a state in India over 5,000 years ago. Lord Krishna was born and brought up in Raj. Sensual enjoyment always distracts the mind of a devotee and makes it difficult for him to focus on devotion. The aspiring devotee may feel that desire for the sense objects, which keeps a distance between the Lord and him, is forcibly pulling him towards them and weakening his interest in devotion. The devotee must therefore take exclusive shelter of Bhakti Devi and the Lord and give up sense enjoyment. When the devotee tries to give up sense pleasure, he is unable to do so due to many layers of his conditioning. This situation is described by the Lord in his teachings to Uddhav in the Srimad Bhagavatam 11.20.27-28. An aspirant who is no longer interested in acting for the sake of personal gain and is in fact saddened by doing so, who has faith in my stories and who knows that indulgence in sensory pleasures and desires for them lead to pain even if he cannot always give them up, should fulfill those desires when they arise. But with purity in his heart, he should remember them as a source of pain and he should think himself greatly unfortunate for giving in to them. Simultaneously, to overcome this confused condition, he should worship me with love and firm conviction. A devotee who struggles with his senses demonstrates the inner conflict described in this verse. In the midst of his turmoil, the devotee sometimes gains victory and sometimes suffers defeat. But ultimately, he remains firm in his inner commitment. Sage Narad highlights that this commitment is none other than meditation or one-pointed devotion towards the Lord.